So, Gordon, you first, you know, North Korea threatening, quote, a firm action of justice. How seriously should the U.S. be considering that language? Well, at this particular time, you know, this is just standard operating procedure for the North Koreans. They don't want sanctions, so they're going to say things like that. But once they become convinced about the reliability of their arsenal, they're probably going to use it to blackmail the U.S. to break the treaty with South Korea, to take our 28,500 troops off the peninsula, because that will permit them to realize a long-held goal, which is to absorb the South Korean state and rule all of Korea. And so, therefore, we've got to be concerned that this is just a taste of things to come, that North Korea will use their arsenal to blackmail us. Mm. So, Balbina, when the president tweets out that, you know, China has uh, disappointed him in, in uh, the issue of uh, North Korea, um, is that the shot of the foot, you know, the shot of the foot to the U.S., or um, is that um, the right kind of response to North Korea and its actions? Well, um, it's taken President Trump only six months to figure out uh, that China is not the solution to the North Korea problem. Uh, this is something that was emphasized in an approach taken by the previous two administrations over 16 years. So President Trump is catching on actually a little faster. Uh, look, the road to Pyongyang does not go through Beijing. And I think it's time that we stopped relying on China and we actually take China out of the picture. China will not change its policies towards North Korea. Korea because its fundamental long-term national interest is in not doing so. And, and what about, uh, Gordon, this uh, use of the U.S. Uh, missile defense, that it was a successful test? Um, is that uh, response enough or um, is that the, uh, an effective uh, means of protecting the U.S. against whatever North Korea has um, in its missiles? The U.S. has the world's most sophisticated missile defense system, not only THAAD, but also all sorts of things that we can bring to bear. But nonetheless, the North Koreans can overwhelm it. You know, and, and earlier this year, they fired four missiles at the same time, which was a message to us that no matter how good our missile defenses are, they will be able to overcome them. And until we get directed energy weapons, which is some way down the road, we got to be concerned that the North Koreans will be able, one way or another, to defeat our missile defenses. It's good that we have them, and we may be able to knock down a few missiles, but the North Koreans can produce missiles faster than we can shoot them down. Balbina, is it your view that North Korea can overcome the missile defense? Well, I, I think really um, missile defense system is not 100 percent foolproof, but I think we have to be a little bit more careful about what we're talking about. Um, it's not clear to me that North Korea, certainly North Korea does not currently have the capability to attack any of the mainland uh, U.S., um, and I doubt that North Korea ever would. Um, in the same sense that does any of us really think that China or Russia might actually lob missiles at the United States? Possibly, um, and I think we ought to have that concern, but, the, but it's not really likely. The point the point is, is that South Korea is in immediate firing range, and not necessarily just North Korean missiles, but North Korea uh, as a threat um, in its conventional military, mm -hmm. and unconventional, including biological and chemical, and cyber. So uh, we really have to talk about threats to our allies in the region, as well as um, the homeland. And Gordon, uh, Kim Jong-un has launched more ballistic missiles than his father, his grandfather, and there have been, there's been an incredible spike just within the first you know, six months, seven months of this year during the Trump administration. Uh, what's your view as to what he is trying to prove or, or convey to the world? Well, he's trying to prove that he can overcome our defenses, that um, you know, he can hold us to ransom. Uh, and as I mentioned, I I'm sure that one way or another, he will use them to blackmail us. You know, but we got to remember about his missiles. He's making a lot of fast progress. We need to ask a question. How come he is able to do all of these things now? And I think part of it is because he's getting help from the Chinese. You know, the missiles that were fired July 4th and on Friday were brought to the site by Chinese transporter erector launchers. And North Korea's most advanced missiles, not the ones on the, uh, Friday and the 4th, the most advanced missiles look like they are variants of China's JL-1 submarine launch missile. We need to ask the Chinese how come the Ch North Koreans have got missiles that look like they're Chinese in origin. Mm. So, Balbina, you said, you know, road from Pyongyang doesn't go to Beijing, but with that premise, is that what the president, uh, President Trump, is talking about when he says China is a disappointment, that perhaps it may be helping to facilitate uh, these missiles? 
No, well, unfortunately, I don't think that the, um, the, the world's focus is on that connection, and I think Gordon is exactly right. We should take a, be taking a much more closer look at the contributions of China, and not just China, but Russia as well, to North Korea's nuclear missile uh, development. I think what President Trump and everybody else is focused on is China's economic leverage over North Korea. And certainly, China has the most relative economic influence. But we ought to separate out now the, the help and assistance that is coming from China and Russia and other countries and target that. And that's what I meant by we, mm. we can't rely on Beijing mm -hmm. to help us gotcha. because it, it has different goals. All right.